Hi, I'm Jill Kanderis, and I'm playing Margaret Levitt. I'm Pam Matthews, and I'm playing Annie Cannon. I'm Brittany Gall, and I'm, I'm playing Henrietta Levitt. <laughs> I'm Andrew Keller, and I'm playing Peter Shaw. I'm Kirk Arnold, and I'm the director. Molly Clay, I'm playing Wilhelmina Fleming. They are working in the Harvard Observatory, and they are inspecting, um, what do they call that? They're like these photographic plates. Photographic plates of stars that were taken. Yeah, that's one sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's a technical term that I should probably know, but I don't. <laughs> in this we are, oh, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, we're mapping the sky. Yes. And um, I think they're, the photographs, um, their main purpose is they're just looking for what's out there and they're doing math. They're doing a lot of calculations, measurements, and math for the astronomers to then apply to whatever theories they're working on. They're, they're, com they're computers. That's what they call them, computers. Henrietta was a, a, a female astronomer from the beginning of the 20th century, but when she started working, when she started using her, her interest in her degree, she was just what they call a computer who uh, did calculations for the male Astronomers. Silent Sky is uh, mostly about Henrietta Leavitt's work, but it also kind of digs into her personal life in sort of a, a dreamlike manner. Um, so a lot of it, um, Lauren Gunderson really took a lot of liberties with not only timelines, but with uh, Henrietta's uh, love interest and with um, just kind of how she devoted herself to her work and to her family. Well, my character, Margaret, represents the kind of more traditional aspect of this time period where you know, she is offended by women wearing pants, as an example. And so in the play, you kind of get to see her evolve from, she stays traditional a little bit, but she softens those attitudes. Um, Annie starts off being all business, kind of you know, very focused and very focused on astronomy, and then grows to be a little bit more fun, and to also become politically motivated, which was kind of a neat arc for her. Henrietta takes a really interesting journey. Uh, she starts off pretty young in the opening scene. Um, she's very uh, motivated to get started, very excited to get started, and she's ready to pursue actual astronomy. And then she has um, a little bit of an awakening as to what is actually waiting for her at Harvard. So she kind of falls back, but she's very persistent in that she wants to make a discovery. And so she presses and presses and presses until she finally you know, gets to um, do her own work and really do her own research. And then by the end of the play, um, she's just this woman who has discovered something so big and so wonderful, and she's still so very humble about it. Peter starts out as sort of the token uh, male representative of this time period. I mean, even in the, in the character description in the play, it says, the man. So he sort of represents this kind of stoic, old-fashioned attitude towards women and men and relationships and, and work. And it, he's sort of a victim of circumstance in the sense that he comes from money, he has to do what is sort of expected of him, not what he necessarily wants to do. And by the end of the play, going through this period of time where he only sticks to the status quo, he realizes that there's more to life than that by falling in love and then falling out of love and kind of changes completely by the end of the play. Now, Wilhelmina is tough. She's Scottish. She's fun-loving. She uh, was a very young woman and had to do things on her own and make her way in a man's world. She has a very deep friendship with Annie and then with Henrietta too, and, and probably feels very protective and maybe even motherly toward her, I would think. She has a son, so it's not that much of a stretch to, to feel that way toward someone, especially someone younger than you, um, that maybe she sees herself as a mentor toward. She brings a lot of levity. There's a lot of levity in the play. Well, I, I was telling somebody that it's, it's really the perfect in many ways, a perfect uh, play for Women's History Month because of the struggle with um, women's place and, and all of those types of issues. You know, you can find parallels back to 
uh, the, what they also called computers with NASA in the 60s that were shown in, in the movie Hidden Figures, uh, the code breakers of World War II, the ladies that broke the enemy uh, communications. Um, so it, it, it's, it's that ev ev eminent struggle for women to break into whatever, break the glass ceiling or break into whatever field or get equality in pay or whatever the, whatever the issue is, I think there are parallels with this. And you see that it goes, it, you know, it didn't start in the 60s. It, it goes back as far as the beginning of the 20th century and obviously even farther back than that. Andrew in particular, um, as the man in it, bears the brunt of um, our loving scorn, um, our loving derision a little bit, our exasperation with him. Um, though it, it, there's a mutual respect that comes along. So I think the scenes um, with the three women, the three astronomers, and then he comes in like a lumbering bear. It's, it just, it's very funny. Yeah, I, or I was thinking more of Kramer from Seinfeld, but because <laughs> um, you know he, he comes in just to sort of assert his authority as the man, which is comical in of itself, and because he, he has no authority whatsoever, and uh, I'll spoil that one for you, and uh, just to come in and have this rapport with the um, with the workers who work there, sort of first of all sets the stage for the relationships that eventually develop, but also they do help bring some sort of levity to the. To the play. Yeah. Come see Silent Sky!